This video is going to be split into two parts. In the first part, we're going to be implementing the camera. And in the second part, we're going to create this enemy which follows us around this map. So I've just removed the enemy from the game so we can focus on implementing the camera. So as you can see, as I'm moving around the map, you can see that the camera is centered on the player, which is in the middle of the screen. And in order to create this camera, we need to shift all of the objects in our game as well as the floor by an offset. So what I mean is, if I move to the left here, you can see that the floor is moving towards the right. And in my f if I move up, then the floor is moving down. And it's basically going in the opposite direction to the player's movement. So the offset is relative to the player. We need to apply this offset to all of the objects in our game. So this includes um, the player, the bullets, and later on, the enemies as well. And after we apply this offset to all of the objects, it basically gives this illusion that the world is moving around the player. Let's implement the camera. So I'm going to go down and underneath this bullet class, I'm going to create a new class called camera. Class camera and it will inherit from pygame.sprite.group with a capital G. Next, let's create our constructor. So def underscore init self and super dot underscore underscore init. So we need to inherit from the parent class constructor. Inside this constructor, we need to create our offset variables. So I'll just type self dot offset equals pygame dot math dot vector two. We're going to be storing this offset as a vector, and currently this is um, going to be empty, so it will be zero zero. So in order to implement the camera, we need to change how the draw function works in our code. So right now we're drawing all of our objects to the screen using this draw method. But we need to create our own method for drawing to the screen because we need to apply an offset. So let's create a custom draw method in our class. So def custom underscore draw self. And if you remember from earlier, I was saying that our offset is going to be based on the player's position. And since the player is always in the center of the screen, that is also known as half of the width of the screen. So we have this width variable. So over here we have our width variable and our height variable. So the player is going to be positioned halfway um, between the width and the height, so in the middle of the screen. So we just need to half these values to create our offset. So down in our class, we can create our offset variable, self.offset. First, we're going to start with the x value. So self.offset.x equals x, And we need to subtract the width divided by 2. And here we're using interdivision. The reason we need to subtract is because we need to um, make the camera go in the opposite direction of the player's movement. And we need to basically copy this and do the same thing for the y value. So I'm going to copy this down. And instead of offset.x, I'll just put y and change this to center y and this from width to height. So we have our offset variables and now what we're going to do is apply this offset to all of the objects in our game. So we need to loop through all of the objects in our game. So we need to create a for loop. So for sprite in all sprites group. Every sprite inside this all sprites group is going to be at a different position. So we need to apply a different offset for each sprite. So let's create our offset position variable. So offset underscore pause. So this will be different for every single sprite. And we're going to set this to sprite.rect.top left. And we're going to subtract the offset. And the next thing that we need to do is just blit the sprite at this position. So screen.blit sprite.image offset underscore pause. So right now we've shifted all of our objects in our game by this offset and we also need to shift our floor by the offset as well because our floor is not inside the all sprites group so it won't be shifted by this offset so let's create the offset for our floor so i'm going to create a new section here called draw the floor or you can write shift the floor and we're essentially going to do the same thing that we did here so we need to um, create an offset position variable and we also need the rectangle of the floor. So let's do that first. Let's create the rectangle um, around the background. So self.floor underscore rect equals background dot get underscore rect and top left equals zero comma zero. So 
let's create our offset position variable here for the floor. So floor offset underscore pause equals self dot floor underscore rect dot top left subtract self dot offset and just like before we need to blit this to the screen so screen dot blit background and we need to blit it at this position so floor offset pause so that's about all we need for our camera class for now before we test this let's get a different image for our background so I'm going to change this basically we're going to use a different image called ground.png and it will look like this so if you don't have this you could just check the github in the description below and you could just download this image and put it into your background folder so here I'm just going to type background equals pygame.image.load and the path is background forward slash ground.png and don't forget to put dot convert at the end so let's try this out now so as you can see the camera is working fine and it looks like we're moving around the map but our player rotation is not working anymore so let's try to fix that so to solve this error we need to go to our player class and find the player rotation function and over here we are finding the x change between the mouse and the player by completing this calculation so the second half of this calculation is incorrect now because uh, we've added a camera. So here it says that we're subtracting the hitbox rectangle's x value. This hitbox rectangle is not being uh, applied an offset. So whenever we're moving around the map, we're not applying an offset to this rectangle. And if we wanted to keep this the same, then we would have to apply the offset. But it would be simpler just to remove this and replace it with the position of the player which we know is in the center of the screen. So width divided by two. And we need to do the same thing for the Y. So we can replace this with height divided by two. And now if we run this again, it should be working. So as you can see now, both the camera and the play rotation are working. So now that we've got the camera working, let's start implementing the enemy. So I'm going to go down and create a new class called enemy. I'll create it before my camera class. So class enemy and we want to inherit from the sprite class so pygame.sprite.sprite .sprite. and next thing we need to do is create our constructor so def underscore underscore init underscore underscore and we need to pass in self and we're also going to pass in the position so this will be the spawning position of the enemy next we need to type super dot underscore underscore init and inside here, we can pass in the groups that we want the enemy to belong to. So we want it to belong to a group called the enemy group, as well as the all sprites group. So we already have the all sprites group, but we need to create this enemy group. So let's go down. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to rearrange the code here. I'm going to move the groups to before these variables. And we have the all sprites group, the bullet group, and we also need the enemy group. So enemy group equals pygame.sprite.group. So this line here, it adds the enemy to these two groups. So there's multiple ways of adding sprites to groups. And earlier we used a different method, which was um, to use the add method to add the player to the all sprites group. Next thing we're going to do is create the image and rect variables for our enemy. So I'll just type self dot image equals pygame dot image dot load and the path for the image that I'm going to use is necromancer forward slash hunt forward slash zero dot png and don't forget to convert alpha this and it turns out that this image is actually too small right now because I was playing with around with it earlier so let's actually scale it up so self dot image equals pygame.transform.rotozoom and we need to pass in three arguments so the surface, the angle and the scale so we don't need to worry about the angle so the surface is just self.image the angle is zero and we want to scale it up to double its original size so now let's create the rect variable so we need a rectangle around our image so self.rect equals self.image.get underscore rect and we also want to set the enemy to the position 
that we pass in. So we need to set the center of this rectangle to that position. To do that, we type self.rect.center equals position. So now we have the image and rect variable set up. So let's try to create an instance of our enemy. So over here, just below the player variable, I'm just going to type necromancer equals enemy. And we just need to pass in the position as a tuple. So inside brackets, I'm just going to put 400 comma 400. And if we run this, then we should be able to see the enemy. Yeah, and right there we can see the enemy. So the next thing we want to do is get the enemy to chase us around the map. In order to get the enemy to chase the player, we need to know two things. The first thing that we need to know is the direction that we need to travel in. And also we need to know the speed or velocity that the enemy should be traveling at. So let's create our direction variable. So we'll just type self.direction equals pygame.math.vector2. And we also need to create our velocity variable. So self.velocity equals pygame.math.vector2. So both the direction and the velocity are going to be vectors. And we also need a speed for our enemy. So I'm just going to write self.speed equals four, but because this is a constant, I'm going to put this in the settings file. So I'll just type enemy underscore speed. And here in the settings file, I'll just create a new section for enemy settings. And I'll just type in enemy underscore speed equals four. So now let's create a function called hunt player or chase player. And this just needs to take itself. And now what we're going to do is we're going to get the position of our player and the enemy, and we're going to translate them into vectors. So for the player, we're going to type in player underscore vector equals pygame.math.vector2. And we want this to be at the center of the player, which is player.hitbox underscore rex dot center. And we need to do a similar thing for the enemy. So we want to get the enemy's position as a vector. So change this to enemy underscore vector. And we want to have self dot rex dot center. The next thing that we need to do is figure out a way of calculating the distance between these two vectors. And the reason we need to do that is because once the distance is zero, then we know that the player and the enemy are right on top of each other. So we don't need to move the enemy anywhere. But if the distance is greater than zero, then we know that we want the enemy to keep moving in that direction. So let's create a new variable called distance. And we need to calculate the distance between these two vectors. And I'm actually going to create a new method for calculating this distance. So the new method will be called get underscore vector underscore distance. And this just needs to take in self and two vectors so vector underscore one and vector underscore two. So in our case, this is going to be um, the player vector and this is going to be the enemy vector. And all we need to do is return vector one minus vector underscore two and apply the magnitude method. So dot magnitude. So now we can just go back to our distance variable here and we could type self dot get underscore vector underscore distance and we could pass in player underscore vector and enemy underscore vector. So now our distance variable holds the distance between these two vectors. The next thing that we need to do is check if the distance between the player and the enemy is greater than zero. So to do that, we'll just use an if statement. So if distance is greater than zero, then what we want to do is update the direction variable so that it points in the direction of the player. To do that, we can just type self.direction equals player underscore vector minus enemy underscore vector dot normalize. And what this normalize method does is it converts this vector to a unit vector, which means that it has a length of one. So now we're going to handle the else statement. So if the distance is equal to zero, then that means that the enemy is already on top of the player. So at this point, we don't need to update the direction variable. We just want it to be zero. So to do that, we can just type self dot direction equals pi game dot math dot vector two. So this basically means that the vector is going to be zero comma zero. 
and that's what we want because we don't want the enemy to be moving next we can update our velocity variable so go to type self dot velocity equals self dot direction multiplied by self dot speed so here we are multiplying our unit vector by our speed and that will give us our velocity and next we're going to update the position of the enemy so self dot position plus equals self dot velocity and lastly we just need to update the position of the rectangle of the enemy so to do that we can type self dot rect dot center x equals self dot position dot x and we need to do the same for the y so I'm going to copy this down change this to center y and this to position dot y and the next thing you need to do is just create your update function so I did that earlier but just um, call the function that we just created self dot hunt underscore player so now if we run this we should see the enemy chasing our player so as you can see the enemy is chasing the player around the map I'm going to leave it there for this video guys so in the next video we will be implementing adding the enemy's health so that when we shoot it, it actually loses health and we'll just be developing our enemy if you enjoyed this video and you found it useful then please don't forget to leave a like and consider subscribing and I'll see you in the next one